Building. All right. Oh. So I think for our string thing, the problem we're having is we're updating it saying new string equals, but I think it should be plus equals, shouldn't it? Yeah. That's so what I was thinking. Of, like adding it on instead of just updating the last letter. Well, because in at that case, I was thinking doing this, right? So just doing... Uh, Oh yeah. Wait. Doing it backwards, right? So you do string dot length is the number, whatever. And mm -hmm. then I is greater than equal to zero. And then I minus minus. And then just rather than anything else, you're literally just putting a new string in there. Oh yeah. Theory, you can do undefined hello. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, uh, probably not zero. Let's see. Nope. Okay. Oh, minus one, because because I don't think it does zero. Wait, you took out the minus one. I took out the minus one, didn't I? Yeah. Cool. Nice. So technically you do, so yeah, I guess I forget string length. It doesn't, uh, it counts it from one to whatever number, right? As opposed to zero. So you have to subtract uh, one. Okay. And then you can just do backwards <clears throat> going down to zero. So string, guess, so strings actually, aren't zero based or zero indexed? I can just do one. Nope. No, I can't do one. Why? <laughs> oh, because the length. Well, I guess what's the... Uh, are strings zero-based, or do they start at one? That's what I was going to... String dot... Yeah, it's zero-based also. Like, they're, they're the same as arrays. So, um, I should be um, less than or equal to zero. For the right, second right, right. condition. Right, 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 right. I was just messing around with it. <laughs> Oh, okay. The length is okay. Well, I guess it's I think not. if you wanted to do one, you get rid of minus one, maybe. That's what I was trying to see. Like so, but uh, that's what I was trying to see if it mattered. We should be minus one, like to be i equals string dot length minus one. The, the, the last value will be, will be like uh, it starts from zero, so the last value will be minus the length of the of the of the array or the string itself. Right. So whenever I'm doing so string or or array or yeah string specifically, I need to add minus one whatever so it actually counts. Okay. I'm still confused why string dot length and i is greater than equal one wouldn't work. Why don't we just That's try writing it out like step by step, like writing what we think would happen? Yeah, I guess. Because I guess I want to see what the, it the gets string, under. String dot length would be five. So it'd yeah. start by printing the fifth value. Oh, but if there's no fifth value, which there's not, it's. Yeah. If it's zero based. Yeah. It wouldn't work, right? Like, because it's yeah. Regardless of what we put, the i is greater than or less. Because nothing ex to. That's why you're getting undefined because it doesn't exist. It's the same way you would do an array. Like, if you hit some hit an index in an array, and it do doesn't exist, then okay, okay, that makes sense now. Okay, I see why now. Now we have to add minus one because the same thing applies. Uh, yeah, you're right. The same thing applies with arrays when you're doing. Because it'll give you the length, but it's, it's, I guess it is based off of, it's the length that it's returning, the dot length property is not zero based. Yeah. But the string itself is accessed as zero based. Okay. So yeah, I think I answered that question like four times, right? <laughs> yes. Let's go to the next. <laughs> I think that's pretty helpful though, like looking at all the different ways we could do it. Yeah, I guess I just, yeah, I, I don't want to, uh, I feel bad because I, a lot of the solutions that I do now are more, uh, I do, oh, no, right? No, what did I do wrong? 
Maybe. <laughs> Last one. Show your stream. Oh, I, it was right. Okay. I just, the console log. Oh, it didn't count. Okay. Free code camp is tricky sometimes. <laughs> I thought I did something wrong, but I didn't. I just. All right. Am I still recording? I guess I am. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Let's. So, yeah. Let's do factorial as a number. So, return the factorial of the provided integer if the integer is represented with the letter n. The factorial is the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. Factorials are often represented with a shorthand n. Uh, exclamation point. For example, 5 exclamation point is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which equals 120. Only uh, This is definitely recursion. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can apply a recursion in this one. Only integers return greater than or equal to 0 will be supplied to the function. So let me remember, because you have to have a base case for recursion, right? Like, it has to stop at some point. Yeah. The base case would be zero, I guess. So do we do a base case with if? I don't really, like I've yeah, always had yeah. trouble with recursion. So if, 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 if num is greater than zero. It, well, in our, in our thing here, it says like our, what's it called? Requirements, it says, only integers greater than or equal to zero. Oh, greater than or equal. Yeah, you're right. Because if zero would just return zero, and it would get added. OK. <clears throat> so I'm going to So it's counting down. So if we are to put in, I guess, what's the, so it's, it's 5, we can do. Do we need to make a new variable for this? That's what I was trying to think. Because technically you can do it through a variable or through another function where you're just calling it and just. I'm gonna make just one that's let sum. All right, so let's do that. Let sum. Or going to be one? No, zero. Because you're, you're we're just adding to it. Oh, All right. But then at the end it returns num. So would we turn it to? Would we change it to return sum? Yeah. I guess I can set that up now. Yeah, because that's what uh, we return. The one I just tried didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let me see. <clears throat> so we basically have to tell it whatever number it is, because it looks like it's going backwards, right? So we, whatever we tell it, we have to subtract one until it's... The way I did, I did sum plus equals num, num minus minus factorialize. And then I like recalled the function, but that didn't work. Um, oh, I see what, okay. I can convert it into an array and use reduce, but that feels like a lot more work. Let me see, here's my... Let me see, let me see, let me see.
Like we could do this with a a for loop, couldn't we? Like without doing recursion. Yeah, I guess let's start there. I'd still like to know the recursion, but I know it's probably going to be easier. Uh, yeah, I, I want to do it with recursion too. Maybe we should try it first, getting it to work like this. So yeah. So I. I guess this is going to have to be one. Actually, no. I guess it would be yeah. num, right? We can do it back. We can do this one backwards again. I is greater than equal to zero. Oh, I actually. And then we can do some. And yeah, I think I would be greater than or equal to zero. Oh yeah, you got that. Never mind. Wait, well, you have times or equal? Shouldn't it be plus equal? I thought that's isn't that what the product? Yeah, yeah, oh, we are multiplying. Never mind. I thought we were adding, <laughs> adding them all. <laughs> I'm a dummy. Okay, zero, 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 zero. Because I is. Oh, because sum is zero. That's why. I'm. <laughs> That would help, right? <laughs> All right. I'm going to have a big dog. How about we replace this with something? So I'm going to write this up. Let's see. Change the So that works. So if i is 1, it goes up to the actual number, it increments, and we're just. Uh, yeah. But now comes the fun part where I figure out cursive. Oh, yeah, I super cheated. Okay, I see now how it works. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Oh, I remember this lecture. Okay. So if n equals zero, return one. I guess it's num, right? Technically return if num equals zero. Else return num times rise. Will that work? No. Sweet. Just because I'm returning, it's not good enough. Yeah, so it almost chains it. So it starts off if it's, so if it's five, it's gonna be five times factorial wise. The parameter four cuts back in here, returns four times factorial number factorialize three, three times factorial times two, two times factorialize with one, and then one times factorial of zero, it returns one, so one times two, and then comes back up. So it, yeah, it basically turns it into a little like chain and starts multiplying back on its way up. It comes up to 120. Cool. That's a weird way to do it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I kind of get lost like why if it's returning, doesn't it just stop the function altogether? Why does it like recall so, itself and work again? Well, because it basically makes another scope, right? Or it makes a it makes a function with it, it's a Russian nesting doll of functions, and it when it finally hits that one, that's when it starts returning all those numbers. So let's see, let's do this example, right? So five times factorial number four, it doesn't know, so it. I mean, like, I get why, how it, like, goes through them all. I just don't understand, like, why after you do, like, return num times factorialize it, like, recalls it again. Let's see. <clears throat> Function four times Function. Function, which returns. So, so this is one times factorial of zero, it returns one. So one times one is one. This becomes one. One times two is two. It comes back, returns two. So three times two becomes six. Return six, six times four becomes 24. Or no, whatever is, whatever the number is, whatever returns it to, I don't know, I don't know math. <laughs> and then I guess 120, because that's what I see as the answer. Okay. So yeah, it literally just like, it, it literally waits. Like all those run functions is like basically holds 
So all these all get stuck in like the call stack. Yeah, basically, you're 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 yeah. They all get stuck on the call stack till it finally hits that one and then starts running its way back up. But when it hits the return num, why doesn't it like the? When it hits like the the return num, why doesn't the call stack stop like popping off? Why don't they start popping off the call stack at that point? Is it because there's like another function queued up in there, like recalling oh, it before they can pop off? Oh, I see. So like, wh why wouldn't it like? Why wouldn't it stop? Like, so if it does the first one and goes down, why wouldn't it start like returning? Yeah. I don't know. Cause like it returns, so when it returns, shouldn't like the but it's call stack function, get like, right? like technically yeah, it's so. it's it it can't like it it can't do it until it actually gets something back from this, right? Like oh, okay, I think I get that. Yeah, so it can't technically. So it needs to know what. So like, if it's on five, it needs to know what's four, and if it needs like if it keeps asking. Uh, yeah, it I definitely can't. helps to write it out the way you did. Yeah. Like, writing out, like, five times runs function, and when you get to the bottom, like, change it, like, start changing them up to the top again. That's, like, right. really useful. It's the only way, like, I understood recursion, like, in a, because <laughs> I think it's factorials and like, <clears throat> one other example that I've ever seen where you actually, like, figure out or what, what the practical application is. But then, like, you're then you run into this issue where you literally have like, so if you want to know the factorial of like 5,000, then you're going to have like 5,000 <laughs> yeah. in the call stack. So that's not probably the best. Jesus. So like, if it's only like a couple, if it's only like five or 10 things, it's not so bad. But when you, when you're doing a thousand things that might, that might hit that maximum call stack. Might get that error. Yeah. That was a good problem. Yeah. Did I still pass it? Oh yeah, I still passed it. I'm gonna run to the toilet real quick. Yeah. Take a quick leak. Taking a break, I guess. There's, this, there's so many brackets. <laughs> I'm getting like lost in my brackets. So garbage. It just feels <laughs> so garbage. Like, how did you go about this? Yeah, that Hello. is so, huh? How did you go about this? I just saw a complete. I think someone found a solution. Someone find a solution to it. Good. I fi I fixed it, but again, like it's a nest. It's so like gross. Can I see the solution? Here, go ahead. Show your show your screen. Cause that was I never want to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's funny, like, my brain was already thinking, like, map and reduce on that one. Because there's already an accumulator built in it, and you're mapping over. You're, so you're mapping over the outer array, and re you're yeah. reducing the yeah. inner array into the <laughs> element. Yeah. Hello, no money. <laughs> Ugh. That made me so angry. Yeah. That made me so angry. You know I'm just gonna do it. No, screw this. I'm just gonna do it the way. All right. Let me see. Let's do it the better way. Okay. Let's try this again. Uh. So we're going to at least map. I think map just takes one, right? Value 
index and then the array. Okay. Let's see. I think I don't need. I, I don't need. So call it an element and we'll say, yeah, call I. That's great. Why not? Okay. So that takes care of this top half. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. And then so within it, <laughs> oh, now you're cheating. Yeah, <laughs> cheating. I just want to, <laughs> like, I can see it better. Okay, go, just go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. If you can walk your way with this, then I think. <sighs> so you're mapping through the array. So this the is first the top part of the array. Yeah, exactly. Then how would you go about the, uh, the inner array, like the sub arrays? So I've noticed you have to do a return in there, right, to get stuff back. I'm wondering if, so you would use the element, because the element is now this. So, so, yeah, you, you know, you, you, can use, um, the, you can use the map on the element, like the element dot map, since you're picking up. Oh, Oh, okay. Okay. So, so I don't have to do that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to return anything. Cool, cool, cool. I, I was always trying to figure out. <laughs> so I can use. Not map. I think since you're picking each part of the array, then you should still use map. Oh. So I can you're use not adding device. it up. You're not adding it up. You're just comparing it. So filter map reduce. Reduce adds it up. Map I trace to filter. What does filter does? What does filter oh. do? Well, because I, I always assume that map returns the same uh, the same array, right? The same array with the same amount of elements. No, map just I think map just iterates through the array, then you can do anything with the iteration, like the way we do with for loop. Oh, like a for each. So you're yeah. You're, yeah. Map okay. is like a loop, like just loops through the array. So I think you can do anything you want within the map. I see. I see. I see what you mean. Because uh, okay. Yeah, and I end up only using reduce only because it has that like initial value in the accumulator. That's the only reason why I end up using those. Uh, even if we reduce the use um, call function doesn't go to it does return zero. Actually, no, I guess we don't, you don't really need to. You don't really need to know. Okay. Ugh, what am I doing? I need to write another function. Well, for me, I just use like uh, math dot like uh, max, you know, find the largest number on it. Oh yeah, here, go ahead and show your screen. I'm just screwing around at this point. I'm super, I'm super mad right now that it took me so long. <laughs> uh, I wish I can, but like uh, I'm using my, my my smartphone right now. Oh no worries. All right, you're all yeah. good. Yeah. All right. So here, let's talk it through. Yeah, yeah, I can I show wanna, you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll 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 start from from fresh. Uh, I'll let you. I'll I'll uh, we'll we'll do a. Yeah, I can. I think I can like explain it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So make it a an array, a empty an array. Okay. All right. Now. Uh, R, you know, uh, A R R mm -hmm. parameter, yeah. Right, the parameter. Map. Call it L, because why not? Okay. All right now, uh, I would uh, 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 new R dot push. And uh, you know the syntax of math dot max. Uh, it's like uh, it's like uh, I believe capital M A T H dot. Oh, okay, yeah. So on the math object. Yeah. Just using the map and uh, the max. Uh, uh. Okay. There you go. Oh yeah, and um, 
in, in, inside those parentheses, you're going to use the spread operator. Okay, I see. Yeah, because like within those arrays, there's also another arrays. You know, right. Lots of number numbers, right? And then you uh, enter a uh, uh, EI. You okay, I see. Your, yeah, uh, yeah. Whatever, whatever the element is, I see. Right, and after that, you can just like uh, return so new R. Yeah, yeah. I see what you mean. So for this one, is it four or five? So there. should return an array. Of course, it doesn't tell you what it returns. Uh, nine, 35, and 1,000. Bang, bang, bang. Nice. Cool, cool. All right, do you understand it? You want me to uh, walk you through? Okay, so like, uh, I, I guess I'll do it anyway. So, yeah, please. All right, so you have the a empty array. Right. And once you, uh, you now use your uh, uh, your array that you pass it through your uh, function. Right. And you're going to map it through it. You know, go like basically a for loop. But it just looks clean. It looks nicer. Right. And once all that, you will grab your empty array and you will like uh, push those uh, elements inside the um, inside your R. And the spread operator is because like with math.max, it'll, it'll compare two numbers inside those parameters. Mm -hmm. But you don't know if there's like, you don't know like if one of those subarrays have like a hundred or one, or, you know. So instead so of that, we're using spread operator. It just helps, you know, it spreads the subarrays into like different types of like uh, arguments inside. So that's helpful for us. And after that, uh, we're just gonna like uh, once it's all done, we're gonna like return our array. So um, there you go. Dope. So if that's the case, then maybe an easier one would be. Uh, you can use like uh, some sugar syntax syntax if you want. Because I'm all about efficiency. Yeah, you can just like return. Uh, I always do that. I don't know why. It, I don't have to add the third, the third one, but I just. I guess maybe because like I just did it like the, that reduce method a bunch of times. I just wanted to. I see. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be back for a bit. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, so all dot push math dot max <laughs> oh, no. Uh, uh, no, that's not going to work. I have to return all. Because I initialize it as an empty array, so can I can return it as all. Yeah, okay. So I can't, I can't, okay. So I have to actually do, so the same thing can, can be done with reduce and just in. Uh, I guess it's about the same amount of lines. Same function, same same thing happens. You have accumulator, which is an empty array. You run that dot max oh. in each element. So how did you guys know about this? Hmm. I know. Yeah. Wow. Wow. This is so short, man. <laughs> so you reduce 
push wow okay okay um, okay reduce uh, anything. i mean i'm sure there's an even faster way to do all that stuff but or get it all in one line because wow. that's that's what people tend to do wow but yeah kind of no, the same me, thing just let me let me let me type it <laughs> <laughs> No, but our boys will be in June. Yeah, I mean. All right. Well, that was fun. I think the lesson here is for loops. Feel like I'm hogging all this time. So if anybody actually wants to like complete <laughs> their stuff on here, you are free to do so. Like, I guess I was just the guinea pig because because uh, I felt like it. But if anybody actually wants to do their their problems on here as well, they can. They can share their screen. Sorry, I'm trying to get my, my lunch ordered. <laughs> now I get it. I got to get dinner at some point, too. I thought I was going to have more cash schedule than trying to run a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, for sure. so, every, so all the like lounge time that I've normally been doing for the past couple days is all gone. <sighs> all right cool 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 all right i think that was fun all right. <laughs> uh, yeah okay i just went through i need to look through this code again but i'll look at i'll look at it later though let's go on yeah that was uh who did that do hmm? who did it oh so uh so basically I think the original one was so you're you're uh, this one I guess made more sense because you're actually like starting with an empty array, but mm -hmm. I guess math.max finds the largest element, right? And then you're using the spread element, the spread operator uh, in each index, but like so basically the spread like it allows it to to um, basically take all those individual elements and and put them in as as arguments. So it's literally like math.max does all the work for you, especially with the spread operator, right? Like rather than you having to say like A is greater than B and then have it like like run through each element that you're doing, it, it just basically finds, like it automatically finds the max, which is a lot better than like setting conditionals. And then, so it's literally doing it for, since we're doing it within, um, within a subarray, like it's literally doing it for each subarray, right? So then it returns. Uh, the, an array that has the four largest numbers in it, as opposed to like the nested for loops, that, <laughs> or even like a map upon a map, right? Like, because that was my that my my thought was to do map 
and then within it either do another helper method that runs through each individual element but this one this solution is so much better that's dope i like it and it passed so it has to be good right all right uh, let's see this Check if it's, okay, so scripting, confirm the ending. Check if a string, the first argument of string, ends with the given target, or a given, uh, ends with the given target string, the second document. This challenge can be solved with the dot ends with uh, method, introduce ES 2015, or other known, otherwise known as ES6. But for the purposes of the challenge, we'd like you to choose one of the JavaScript struct, substring methods instead. Okay. I don't think I've really messed with substring as much as I probably should have. Let's find out. String category, right? So let's go see what methods we have available. Path starts. Oh, there's two. Substring returns a portion of both. Oh, okay. All right. Let's start specific index. This substring method returns part of the string between the start and ending, or the end of the string. This one. So maybe this one. Okay, I'm thinking it might be this one, but I guess I should actually do the problem. All right. So I can just return whatever I'm going to return is just going to be equal to the target. And that will just return true or false. But I guess, how do you find a substring? How do you find the end of a substring? Do you take the length minus one? Maybe. Minus one. Because you're, I'm assuming, oh no, but, <sighs> damn it. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming everyone's going to be one. That's not going to work. Oh, you can just take minus target dot length. I wonder if target dot length will work. This is a lot of length checking. This feels like it's too much. Console. So if I do this one, will it end up the same? Hell yeah. Okay, so we can use the substring, take the string of the length of the string and subtract it away from the target length. And this will because all we're looking is for true false. So Uh, all right, how about I, well, let me first make sure it actually runs. Okay, so it works. 
So let's build it out. I don't want to assume anything. So let's build out. How do I want to build this out? We want to find out the same. Uh, we want to figure out. If the target matches the end of given stroke. So for this challenge, are we just returning true or false? Yeah, basically. That's the only reason why I set that conditional here. That's the only reason why I was just returning this. Uh, but I was going to like break it down. So like actually get this into a variable. Oh, and I passed it using, wait, no, I didn't. <laughs> well, cause I was trying to, uh, it says substring. Uh, yeah. But then I didn't realize that there's two, there's two substrings methods. I guess I should read what the other one says. Let's see. Because I saw a substring and then there's sub str. Which I don't know what that actually does. Oh, never mind. It's a legacy function, that's why I don't know about it. All right, so I made the right choice. And then I thought it was supposed to be just like the last letter, but I realized that you can put in any like a giant thing of string. So. I'm not gonna overcomplicate this. <laughs> yeah. But I'm basically just taking the substring, finding the length of it, and then subtracting the tar the length of the whatever's in target. So that will return, that should return the same amount of letters on each side. And then I'm just matching each of them together and seeing whether it returned true or false. So far that's working. So I'm not going to question. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. All right. I mean, I don't want to. All right, I'm going to do not repeat because I realize that repeat's really easy to do. Yeah, see, there you go. I should read this before I actually do it. Repeat a given string, the first argument, for a number of times. Return an empty string if none is not a positive number. All right, well, that tells me that there's a condition here. I should probably, so if none is less than zero, I should probably wrap that in. For rough lessons. If none is less than zero, I'm just going to turn an empty string, right? Yeah. Turn an empty string. So I'll take care of that. So I can use the same condition and just add on to it. So I can either do a for each or a for loop. I like this of us doing for loops first and then doing the real answer. Yeah. I'm thinking that's probably what we'll do. Okay. 
So it's already happened once. So I don't have to worry about that. I is going to be because I'm just I'm just tacking on to the string. I'm just going to use that to tack on to and not create a new variable. Hoping that doesn't mess that up. Just so used to creating a new variable. String plus equals. Let's see what I did wrong. It's one, one is less than none. All right, plus plus string plus equals string. That's why. That's why it's not working because I put it before the after the returns. So should start to change. No. Why is this so complicated? <laughs> What? One, two, oh, should I make them less than equals to one? Is that not it? I think it's so. God. What the f? One, two, three, it happens four times. So I is one, I is less than one. I is less than three. I or string gets added, so that's two, ABC, ABC, and I console log it, and then I becomes two. I equals two, I is, two is less than three. Oh, oh. I don't get it, mine's coming back, right? I don't know why it's not working. because I'm right? doubling. Nah, I'm just gonna create a new screen. Screw it. That's my problem. Let repeat. string. We'll start at one. Oh, I got it, I think. Oh, yeah, I did get it. What'd you do? Uh, I think I have almost the same as, wait, let me see. If num is less than zero, then I did, I did an else, and then I put like the for uh, loop inside of the else. Okay. I put the let new string and for loop inside of the else, like after the if. Oh, that's why, because I'm returning string like a dummy, not returning. Oh, yeah. There you go. And it's console logging string and not repeat. Jeez. <laughs> Do you not have to have that stuff inside of an else statement for the if? I mean, it's it's still technically going to happen. I guess so, yeah. 
the oh, yeah. is more yeah, like that is true. it's like a kind of in there and then like i know a lot of developers will just like they'll just keep coding as if that if didn't didn't count and so like it, it's an assumed else right like it's as opposed okay. to writing else but i don't know maybe an else would be else would be better because it actually runs through both you know I don't know, like, I don't know if it's better or if it's. Yeah, I have no idea. I just did that because I'm used to it. Uh... Oh, because it's not in the condition. It doesn't know, but it don't know. <laughs> yeah, it don't know what it don't know. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. So then how would I do this? How would I do this? Because the thing is, is that with helper methods that, I mean, I use repeat functions, what I do, like, You'd have to create an empty and array, but then then join it, I guess. I don't know. Let's see. Because the thing is, all those helper methods are all work for arrays, but then you'd have to. Repeat. No, you can't use that. That would be better. Don't know. So you'd either have to fill it with the number. I don't know, it feels like a lot more work to like convert something into an array and then join it. Almost feels better to just do that. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? <laughs> Say so we take our victory. <laughs> Especially after that, like super nested for loop one with so many like <laughs> conditions, like it just felt weird to write all that. I was getting lost in like all the brackets. I couldn't. I was like getting lost and trying to think in about like each condition and like what bracket went to what. Right. I'm lucky that yeah, like I literally set up a condition within else within a condition that is only going to work for negative arrays that. I mean, that's like what I was trying to do too, but I was just like getting so lost in like where to put the conditions and stuff, just cause there's like so many for loops and brackets going on. <laughs> All right. Well, let's at least do this one. Okay. Truncate a string. Truncate a string, the first argument, if it is longer than the given Maximum length. Second argument. Return the truncated string with an ending, with a dot 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 ending. Cool. I oh, I see. Okay. Is. So we're just like cutting it. So I guess we could use sub. Like you could technically use substring, and it'll return like you. So you find the you use the number as the length, and just tack on those little dot dot dots in the string. Okay. Okay, let me see. Uh, should I? I mean, I can all do it on the line, technically. Do I want to? It's a question. So, 
bar. I keep saying bar. Let what's a good variable name? I want to say new string. Screw it, new string. So strings are zero based. So we do strings substring zero. I mean that'll. Uh, so the substring. I think we looked. At, I think I was looking at it earlier. The substring takes in two arguments. Technically one argument, but it can take two arguments. Uh, substring returns the part of the string between the start and the end indexes so if i wanted to start yeah i guess zero would be the first element and then i would put num as the second element because that's going to be the length that it wants to go to right let's see let's console uh, i this. got a i got a couple of conditions right but not all of them so zero and num Okay. So console dot log new string. Same as the old string. Nope. Sub string. Sub string. Okay. So yeah, a tisket. So zero and I guess eight. So Nine, right? <laughs> to the eighth uh, index of the element from in the string. So I can return new string plus. Nope, I super failed. Mm, I need to look at the substring method again. Oh, it's not always gonna have, okay. So these two, these two tests that I failed are literally <laughs> Those are the only two ones I got right. Yeah, because if I do this, those two are the only ones that can be right. Because this taking the full length, so it needs to check and see. All right, well then in that case, I can do I don't get why my substring isn't splicing it correctly. What do you, uh, what do you mean? Uh, I have string dot substring zero num. And then it doesn't seem to be doing it right. Like it's not pulling enough of the, the letters or that it's like not even like pulling it. I don't know, I'm gonna try a different one and see. Let's see, okay. Let me just make a new variable. New string dot length is two. is less than or equal to string dot length. Ternary time. Uh, if it's less, then I want to take 
new string. This feels like I'm adding way too much. Ah, screw this. I hate ternaries and pee in this segment. Yeah. So I'm telling the ones where, where they do the dot length as the number. What would this return? Let's see. One, two, three. New string dot length is less than or equal to. No, less than. And new string dot length is less than length. There's string dot length. Right, because the new string, if it's if it's any less than the actual length of the string, then that means it's going to be truncated. So I can do new string equals da, da, da. And I should be able to return new string, maybe. I do well. Oh, I did it. You did it? Yeah. Nice. If new string. Oh. <laughs> Typo. <laughs> Bam. Oh, nice. Okay, it's not terrible. It's not great. <clears throat> so yeah, so I just created a substring of whatever they want, and then if it's less than the, the original string, then it'll add that dot. If not, if it's the same amount, then it's not gonna add that dot. It's not gonna be truncated, and then we just return it. Cool, it's not terrible, but it works, so I guess I shouldn't complain. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. What is this? Create a function that looks through an array and returns the first element in the array that fits. Cool. If no element passes the test, return undefined. What is the truth test? True or false. So it's, a, it's just a condition. So like for here, they have... Uh, oh, so they set their condition when they type in the parameters. Yeah, so like this one is a function that puts each element in there. And re they're doing a filter function, basically, but they're... Like this one's if if this number if each element is divisible by two, they just want you to return the first one that's true. So in that case it's eight. And then they do another one. If none of them work, if you don't have one, then you just return undefined. Okay. So maybe but you don't know. Ugh. Ugh. You can do okay. like a for loop. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. And like put a condition. That's what I was thinking. Well, I guess you know. Get all this garbage. Tell me what to do. So input 
one. There's an array. And I'll put well, this either number or <sighs> all right. So four point five equal zero. This is um, the array that's being pushed in the parameter dot length. So I guess it's going to be in here, right? Yeah. How do you break a fruit night? I guess it'll, yeah, I'll, I'll do their number thing. So it's the first thing that passes through. If it passes through, you turn it. That's it. Right. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. And then I don't need that. So if funk array element. So in theory, I'm going to assume that every function here is like a like a filter function. It's going to return true or not. Yeah. And then I can just return the array. Which one? Which one? Which one? Boy. All right. And then with that here, I can just return on the find. Yep. Go. Bang, bang, bang. Sweet. That's what I thought. I just, I don't know, going back through all these basic algorithms, I did them when they were four loops of, like a while ago. But now that I've used a lot more of like the, the helper methods, it doesn't seem as counter, it doesn't seem as intuitive. Well, yeah, it, it took me a bit hard to try and switch to like, you know, VS6. And then I decided to like really like, try to go back. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm having a, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> Cause in my brain, like, yeah, I can use uh, my go-to like map filter reduce, and then it just it feels a lot easier. But also probably because like if you're dealing with like larger like data sets or stuff like that, it makes it even easier to like remove a bunch of stuff within a function rather than like setting it as a conditional in a in a for loop. Oh, all right, cool. I did it. I wonder. Hmm. No, but you can't use filter. Filter is going to return every element that matches that condition. I guess you can use map, but it's still going to return an array. I don't know why I always jump back to reduce. Yeah, reduce is for like when you aggregate stuff. Right. I don't know why, like even even stuff I like I know I should use map to like as essentially as for each or as a for loop, but I tend to use reduce. I don't know why. Maybe because I just got maybe because reduce was like the first thing that made sense to me. Even though map and filter are just as like clear and should be as easy. I guess I just use reduce as my default because it took because <laughs> it took the longest to understand. Cool, cool. All right. I'm trying to think if there's any other way to. No, this is about as good as I'm gonna get. Yay. 
Yay. All right. Oh, true theory policy. Okay, cool. So this one is boohoo. Check if the value classified is a Boolean primitive or true, true, or false. Boolean primitives, primitives are true and false. Cool. Oh, I see. So I'm trying to see if it's actually true or false as opposed to a truthy or falsy, like zero or. Yeah. Um, anything but true or false. So I can set specific conditionals on it, like if true, return true, if false, return false, else everything else will be false. Or I could do, do some fun one. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, hmm. I'm trying to think. Use it. So I can use the if else. I can use a ternary. Nah, it's just awesome. It's too easy. actually equals true. true. Oh, no, I can just use... Uh... There's one. There's one I'm thinking of right now. What? Uh, do you want to figure this out on your own? Or like... I mean, oh. I can... <sighs> I I I'll give you a uh, uh, typo. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can use the typo property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? So uh, return return those ones where you just do this, right? Like it's just, it's literally like just a space and it, it counts it as opposed to like putting in parentheses. I think that's it, right? I, let me see, let me look at it. I should, yeah, know, I should know that, but, and then Boolean would be the type, right? Mm -hmm. So in theory this should, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay, that's even better. I like that a lot better. Yeah. Let me see. I should really know what type of actually does. I know what it does. Like it checks the type, like the actual type, and then I know you run into issues with like null. The is that returns an empty object? I think. Yeah, no returns an object, undefined returns undefined, number, string, function, object, symbol, which I still haven't really done yet. Still don't understand, but I will eventually. Cool. No, that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if we return that new instantiation of whatever, it's just going to return the object that it was built on. Huh, cool. Makes so much more sense. All right, cool. Yay. All right. Time. I think we're good. It's only seven here, ten East Coast. Whatever time in China, I don't know. It's so five, three, one p.m. Uh, it's eleven a.m. here. It's, of course, it's eleven a.m. <laughs>
What a weird, what a funny, weird thing to think about. Like, I know, like, on the West Coast, I'm always talking to people on the East Coast. I always take into consideration that. But I, I rarely, like, if ever, think East of me. Like, Hawaii time zone or China. Yeah. All right. Basic algorithm scripting. Title case a sentence. Return the provided string with the first letter of each word capitalized. Make sure the rest of the words are in lowercase. Uh, for this purpose of exercise, you should also connect, capitalize the connecting words like the and of. Okay, so we're probably going to split. We're probably going to split that then. So my first thought is, let me write it out. I'm going to split it into an array. And I guess we'll iterate through it. Probably. Going through the array for loop or whatever. I should probably do more for loops. And then within it, I want to take the first letter find the first letter. Capitalize it. And the remaining letters, I guess, find the remaining letters in lowercase. Cool. And I guess return. Array back to string and turn. Cool. I have to actually remember how to do this. Sorry, I just found it. My wife brought me dinner. Yay. I'm going to eat. Well, I'm going to hold off. Wait, I probably shouldn't be on, on there first. Okay. Da, 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 da. Let's see. Yeah, no worries. I sent that like four minutes ago and I finally just got it. My bad. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So, actually, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to stop. Um, suggest, um, Oh, sentence, because that's the new So literally now, I 
and a copy. So I should be able to do sentence. index This should just return the first letter of the capital. Okay. <coughs> and then we can add. Answer. Yeah, mine's. I'm getting pretty confused with what I'm doing in mine. <laughs> what a like. I, I think I need to that. split the word up. <clears throat> There's got to be a easier way to do this. Okay. So I take the first, I take the word, I take the first element, and I set it uppercase. And then I add, I take slice, so everything but the first element, and I do lowercase, and I add them together, and it returns the same thing. Then I return sentence dot join the space. Yeah. I'm still going over mine. Yeah, I'm going to do it the not dumb way. All right, so I'm going to return string split split dot map. It's going to take a function. It's going to be a word. Words going to equal words here dot two uppercase plus word.
Wait, I don't know why I can't run a for each on this. You should be able to. Yeah, I think I got my syntax wrong or something somewhere. Word, word. So doing let string array equals string dot split would make a new array, right? Yeah. Yeah, kind of the same way this one is right here. Let sentence equal string dot split, and that should return a new array. For mine, when I tried, like I did this something like that, and then I tried to do, like say I was trying to do like sentence dot for each, but it's not letting me run a for each on that, on like the sentence of yours. For me, it's new, it's like string array. Hmm. So me, string array dot for each is not a function. Yeah, in that case, I console log and see what the result is of uh, oh, yeah, whatever you're turning it into. Console.log string array. See, it shows me in an array here. Why can't I run this on it? Oh, I was typing capital for each. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's not catching it. <laughs> Mine didn't work at all. <laughs> it was so off. Oh, I feel like I'm so close, but not quite. No. 
Oh, I think I see where it's wrong. Oh, I'm so close. I just got to put sentence or spaces in and then I got it. Nice. Reduce fixes like basically the same thing. Uh, Do you want to share? Yeah, maybe. Let me console log this real quick. No worries. Let's see. Split. Create a new stream. All right. So mine's really convol. Like I'm, I'm not getting why it's not working. Oh, do I have to uncapitalize stuff too? Yeah. So the first letter will be capitalized, and then anything other than the first letter should be lowercase. So that might be it. That might. So I need an if statement in here. I feel like mine's really long and convoluted. Let array equals new zero new letter. New so letter. let me run some comments. I think I just went about this completely wrong. No, you're good. 
How is there something to check if it's capital or not? Sorry, you know, it's pretty good. Bad timing, but now. Give me one second. I'll be right back. All right, no problem.
Where's this chat thing at? Oh, there it is.
All right, I'm back. Hey. <clears throat> Sorry. Ugh. All right, cool. How are we doing? Uh, I'm a little stuck right here. Uh, so you're setting everything to okay. So each item, so you're splitting it. But it's not lowercasing any of them right here. So what I'm doing is creating an array of words to start off. Right. And then just setting some blank strings that I can save later. And then I'm doing a for each to so cycle through every word in the array that I just made, like of the word array. Right. And inside of it, I'm splitting each word individually. I'm making like a new array. Oh, I see. That like makes a new like letter array. And then for the letter array, I'm just trying to go through it and like set every single one of them to lowercase, like to kind of set a standard to start. But this isn't, this doesn't seem to be working right here. So each, okay. They've set it to lowercase. Letter array for each. Because it's technically <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Because yeah, no, it's fair. That's what I do. Uh it worked here when I like made a new variable and then I saved this I tried doing item equals item to lower item dot lowercase but that didn't work either I think it did right now it just did did it yeah comp uh, take out the uh, yeah just type in whatever Oh, they're all lowercase now. So that should work. Okay. And then without when So we got that working. Is this this was working before we're at uppercase now? Let's see. New letter array zero two updates. New letter equals letter array in the previous one. Oh, uh, no. That letter array should be string array, right? The one where it says when you're assigning new letter, because that's outside of the everything from that everything within that letter array is, is where what line? So the new letter equals letter array zero to uppercase. Wouldn't that be a string array? No. Maybe. This is just a new blank string. Because what I'm doing here, it's uh, saving like the new letter as the capital case letter. And then down here, it's actually changing this to equal what we saved it as. Oh, I see. OK, so you split it. OK, all right. I see now. I see what you're doing. What did I do here? New word equals letter array. Because see right here, it's cap. It shows that it's capitalizing every letter, but then when it pieces it all back together, it goes back to whatever. Yeah, it's like the lowercase stuff wasn't saved.
And see, I'm getting the right output right here for this one at least. I'm a little teapot. Hmm. I wonder if you have to save that that second iteration, the letter, right, into a variable to get the the new. Which is weird, because I'm wondering if it just happens in that for each loop, and then once you bounce out of it, it just goes back to whatever it was. Well, I guess here. So where it says um, on line twenty-seven, where it says console dot log. Hey, wait one second. Hey, no Hey man, sorry about that. My roommate came in and I guess my cat made a mess and I had to go clean it up. Not bad. All right. good. Let's see. I don't I still haven't figured this out. Did you figure it out? Yeah, I went a <clears throat> little different. Maybe I can see what you did and like see if I can understand that. Yeah. Here, let me. So this is the. Um, so I, I used the reduce again. Yeah, but I used the. I did a for this one too. Okay. So, so, I, so yeah, so I kind of did the same thing. I split it and then within the for loop, um, I just took each are, word. And then why are you doing sentence one? Hmm? Why does it sentence one? Oh, it's I. Oh, so it's, oh okay. My screen's too small. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I can see it. Yeah, so sentence I. Uh, equals so I found the first uh, index 
So the first letter of the word, and just use the two uppercase, and then just use the the slice function, which returns the remaining. So I, I took one. So anything beyond the first oh. letter, and I just set it to lowercase. Wow, just, that makes, that's like a million times easier than what I was writing out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like writing out super like unoptimized, just super long code. But I guess in that sense, I could do so here. Uh, let's see. Let's do the for each then. Uh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes for each function word. It should be the same. Uh, Sentence equals sentence index zero to uppercase add to. Oh, what am I doing with sentence i zero? Just put word dum dum. Slice everything but the first index. I got to lowercase. So that should work. Nope. Sentence set to an exam function. I split it. Send. Do I not spell sentence right? <laughs> That's always what I get to like check in. Oh, word. So wrong. Sentence. I'm wrong. Room A, what one? Return sentence. I literally just copied what I did. What is it? Oh, do I have to do another array? No. Sometimes. Dot for each function. So now it doesn't want to do it. <laughs> Let's see. I prove it right. No, it doesn't want to do it. See, I thought like strings were immutable. Like you couldn't like change a letter in the string. You could only change the entire string. No, because it has the same as the index, right? So you you have that. Uh, you still have the ability to change it. So technically, it'd be. I thought like earlier in the free code camp session, it was saying like you can't like if you want to change it. Like oh, there's one example. It was like. 
Jello World and we wanted to change it to Hello World and we just had to resave the string, I guess, Hello World instead of like trying yeah, to we, change the eight. We access the the zeroth index of that word. Oh, okay. And then reassign the value from to H. No, we what did we do? Jeez. I'm pretty sure we just like rewrote like the the word. Probably. Let's see. I think you're right. I remember seeing that. Let's see. I think that had something to do with strings somewhere. Oh, is it use back and touch? No, let's use. We changed it. No, that's just to access it. I was just used to access it, but we actually changed it. No, oh, understanding also. string immediately. Oh, and JavaScript strings values are immediate. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess they are immutable, which means they cannot be altered once created. That's why, like, when I was trying to do my thing, I was, like, creating, like, a letter array because I didn't, like, understand how to change just, like, one letter of it without, like, separating the whole word into, like, an array of letters. Note that this doesn't mean that my string cannot be changed, just that the individual characters of little strings cannot be changed. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Right, 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 right. Because so I think for that one, I just ended up deleting the index of zero and then typing hello, hello world. Yeah, basically. I think that's why I did too. And I only say, like, you can access it and we're just like, we're technically not changing the actual letter, right? We're just either lower casing it or upper casing it. So, we're not uh, so does it work like that? Like, as long as you don't like change the letter, you can like capitalize it or lowercase it. I mean, that's hope, oh, right? Let's see. Oh, uh, so this isn't taking. I need to find another way. Well, I guess it's sentence, right? There we go. Oh, nice. Save the sentence as an entire for each loop. I don't choose want to work. I cannot read really join undefined. But that's the only way I can do it. Yeah, if not, it's just from returning a. <sighs> okay. After we do this one, I'm gonna get off. It's lunchtime over here, so yeah. I'm get some food and stuff. No worries. I think it's been pretty. I think it's just you, me, and the slapping with other people. So, oh yeah, definitely. It's been really helpful though, like doing these mm -hmm. algorithms. It's a good start. Like as you see, it gets more comp. Like if you go into Code Wars or any of those other <laughs> ones, it gets yeah, like, definitely super more complicated. <laughs> I remember the last one I was trying to do was like an an array matrix. So there's like an array, like it's those subarrays, but there was kind of like in a box and you were supposed to like move it 90 degrees, all the numbers like 90 degrees. So if there was a one, like, so let's say there's three, uh, three numbers in each, like the array and the subarrays are like three or four. So it makes like a box. So if there was a one in the middle, you'd have to move it like to the right. It, it oh was, man. It was like, yeah. It was way too much thinking. Uh, guess. guess 
I want to know what it actually does. No, it should be sentence. Actually, I guess it should know. Um, what is, what am I looking for? I'm looking for breach. Find out what the parameters are. Right, I'll prototype that for each. So it's just a callback. Current value index. Oh, okay. So then when I just do that. And That's weird. Dumb. <laughs> Seriously? But then word should work, because that's the same thing as saying that this specific array in this word. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But I guess it's not. It's literally just... Because that's the index, and that's the array. That's I don't really so, get why Word doesn't like work the same way because isn't that basically what Word is? Yeah, that's what I was. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like it's the current value. That's what it's within that callback. The first item is the return value is undefined. Is that why? And then the fourth is the this argument. Once for each element in the ascending order. So you either have to create a new array to like, to yeah. store it all. Makes no sense. Yep. That's so weird. So I either have to go in and actually tell it specifically which array index and not the current value. Yeah, that is. Or I have to create a whole new empty array to push into and return. It's garbage. But then the for loop works. The for loop works perfectly fine because it's assuming the same thing. Like this, this works. Yeah because I'm referring to the same thing. So I guess I should probably figure out why. The value of the current element being processed in the array. The index of the current element of the array that the voyage is being applied to. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know why you had to, had to go for that extra. <laughs> All right. Like well. confusing when you run into stuff like that. All right, man. I'm going to get off the, my food's here. All right, so man. I'm going to go open the door. It was good working through all these problems with you. 
yeah, man, I'm glad I can help. I'm glad I can actually go over them because I realized how much of them I forgot. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. All, All right, man. Catch you later. See you tomorrow. All right, see ya. So how far did we get? Uh, through to three point three two. Oh, it's not the right, the right one. All right, two, four, six, eight, ten. Not bad. Cool. Well, oh, this is fun. Thank you.